Now, uh, once again, welcome to my uh, scientific channel and my scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences. Uh, general in introduction to this video, I am continuing a thread in my research and my teaching, uh, which is specifically devoted to uh, the phenomenon of collective intelligence and to the use of artificial neural networks in studying the phenomenon of collective intelligence. I, uh, I am experimenting a little bit with a new format, you will see it. Uh, anyway, an important thing uh, to, to remember uh, before we go further uh, in that in the video, uh, below me in the, in the video window you can see that inscription discoversocialsciences.com and uh, if you go to the description box below the video, you can see a link of the same phrasing, discoversocialsciences.com. When you click on that link, it takes you to the website of my blog, Discover Social Sciences. And on that website, you can find a written update, which has the same title as this video. This is how it is coupled. Okay. So I go into the specific subject matter of this update. So it is the phenomenon of collective intelligence and the prospects for using artificial intelligence to study human social structures, teaching material and scientific insight, because I want both to develop it into a fully blown line of research and I want to build a line of teaching in social sciences based precisely on that phenomenon. Uh, the key concept here is the concept of intelligent structure. Essentially, I came to the conclusion that uh, what connects human societies and artificial neural networks is the fact that both can experiment with themselves to some extent whilst keeping structural stability. And uh, in human societies, the device that or the social contrivance that serves to keep that structural stability is culture. I define culture as a form of collective intelligence, which endows our society with the, uh, with the flexibility and capacity to change. Uh, now, in social sciences, you have two fundamental questions, the why, or what is the end game of our civilization, and the how. So, how exactly are we going to go through social change? And I am very much focused on the second, on the how. I am focused on uh, how social change takes place. Is it a reductionist approach? Maybe. On the one hand, it, it can be seen as reductionist. Yet, I assume that in practice, for practical purposes, individual existence of a person with all its possible dimensions occurs in a brief glimpse of historical change. Civilizations change and die over thousands of years. Our existence happens over decades. Uh, one century is already bloody long for a human being. So we essentially are happening. We happen. We live in the how, in the moment of social change. I use artificial neural networks in two basic ways. One way is to uh, discover the objectively pursued ethical values of our society. I discovered how to use any set of commonly accessible uh, socio-economic stats so as to find out which of those stats, which of those variables are sort of pivotal for the whole social system. And the second uh, method I invented, or the second method I am working with, because it could be pretentious from my part to say that I invented it, is that, uh, is that uh, we... Uh, I don't know if that uh, text message appeared right on, on your screen, if so, I, uh, I apologize, it was just a text from my wife uh, which came to my phone and my phone is essentially coupled with the computer. Anyway, I go, uh, I, 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 I go further. The second method of 
uh, applying artificial neural networks is to predict human behavior uh, by defining distinct behavioral patterns. Okay, now a brief over, over, overview of those two uh, methods. When I want to use an artificial neural network to discover the objectively pursued values of a society, I use the mathematical construct of a state space. And inside of that state space, I can define a substate space made with the use of a neural network and comprising all such variations of the original data set which can be made by setting one variable as the output one to optimize and aligning all the remaining ones as input instrumental to that optimization. And when I do this, and I do this a lot, I discover that certain variables among the commonly published socioeconomic stats, especially variables pertinent to, pertinent to the labor market, uh, such as, for example, the average number of hours worked per person per year, those variables tend to be like the privileged output variables of those uh, of social systems. So those variables, when they are pegged as the output ones of a neural network, produce data sets or pre produce variations of the original data set, which are very close, exceptionally close, exceptionally similar to the original data, as if it was like a very close representation of our social reality. On the other hand, when I go towards that second method, uh, I start with defining typical behavioral patterns. And here I, I I am basing my research on a very simple thing. It is to, f to be found in any manual of psychiatry that personality is a collection or a set of predictable behavioral patterns. So essentially, however or original we think we are in our actions, we always act in a typical, inside the typical behavioral pattern. And uh, I can, and when I do that, I can, uh, or once, I express human behavior as distinct patterns, I can treat those patterns as distinct phenomena. And I can make a neural ne network which studies variations in the probability that each of those behavioral patterns really happens. And it is, by the way, facilitated by an operation which is commonly done with the neural network, which is called standardization of data. Standardized values can be considered straightforwardly as probabilities. And I now noticed a few things, for example, that uh, once a behavioral pattern is defined inside an intelligent structure, it is really hard to kick it out, even if, even if I arbitrarily turn uh, uh, the prevalence or the probability of happening of a given behavioral pattern to, down to zero, after a few hundreds of experimental rounds inside that artificial intelligence, that behavioral pattern miraculously pops out again. It has a non-null probability and it is essentially the intelligent structure which gives that non-null probability to, to that pattern. And I uh, noticed that newly emerging behavioral patterns tend to systemically reduce the prevalence of the old ones. So if I want behavioral change, I needed to introduce new patterns of behavior instead of just kicking out of the system the old ones. Huh? I also noticed that uh, the probability of happening of any given uh, behavioral pattern strongly depends on the uh, on the fact or on whether the network I use observes and feeds forward information about, about its own internal coherence. So I have like a few ideas to end up with. So I can use a neural network and as a matter of fact, any set of empirical data pertinent to the way a social structure works in order to discover and explore two things. First of all, I can explore collective ethical values. So the collectively pursued, objectively pursued uh, outcomes of a society. 
and I can study the relative prevalence of specific behavioral patterns. And uh, the basic ideas for teaching that I have so far on the grounds of that, like, uh, of, of that current work is that I want to make a line of teaching in social sciences where I introduce some specific mathematical concept right from the beginning. And the concepts that I am very attached to for the moment, first of all, is the concept of state space, strongly connected to another one, to the concept of Markov chains. And secondly, the concept of probability. So I want to coin up a line of teaching where those two things, to, where uh, maths are introduced from the very beginning. And I understand the probability as the structure of reality that, that, that we live in. It, it goes back to Laplace and to his concept of perfectly predictable reality, once I have all the numbers. Okay, that would be all in the, the video editorial to my update. Once again, if you go to the description box below the video, uh, you can find the link discoversocialsciences.com and once you click on that link, it takes you to the website of my blog, Discover Social Sciences, and on that blog you can find a written update which has the same title as this video editorial. So have fun with science and have fun with life. Bye.